Hello, my name is Mark Soper. I'm employed by Vision First, uh, Indiana Alliance iBank, and it's my pleasure to be able to participate in this symposium. I'd like to thank Dr. Mita and other speakers, Dr. Sharita and, and Dr. Siska, for uh, allowing me this opportunity to help establishing an iBank in Bali and uh, identify some things that you could do to support it. And I'd like to review some current aspects of iBanking, touch on a little bit of the history and how we are, where we are today. This picture just shows our uh, research practice area where I've uh, spent some time with Dr. Siska while she was here on her research fellowship. Uh, she was here in February and unfortunately time got... Our iBank, here's a, a view of our uh, processing room and Oh, the other room is our tissue evaluation area. It shows the refrigerator where the tissue in quarantine is kept. Our mission is to improving the quality of life through eye and tissue transplantation, medical research, and education while maintaining the dignity of donors and their families. The iBank uh, Vision First is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization and since 1961, we've provided over 40,000 corneas for transplant, uh, recently averaging about 2,700 corneas per year, with 1,000 of those being used in the state of Indiana, which is our geographic service area. Other corneas uh, are distributed around the United States and elsewhere around the world. We're accredited by the iBank Association of America, and regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, that sets regulations that all iBanks have to adhere to. Uh, we hold various licenses as well in order to distribute tissue. In Indianapolis, we have a football team, professional football, and their uh, Indianapolis Colts. Their mascot is blue, pictured here on his driver's license. And uh, one of the main ways to promote donation is really encouraging people to sign up to be a donor. So this is something everybody can do. On my driver's license, uh, there's a, a, a little orange heart that uh, indicates that I'm a donor. Should I pass away? It's not a question to be posed to my family. They, they already know that I'm a donor. Should that happen? Um, so with this is a promotion that's supported by a number of different groups in our state, not only eye donation, but also organ donation as it uh, saves lives, and in our case, we want to restore sight to those who can't see. So promotional efforts um, really can make this happen, and it builds over time. The process of donation really is um, starts at hospitals where a death has occurred, and where individuals are taken should death occur outside the hospital or pronounced officially in the ER, and all deaths have to be reported and this is the main source of our uh, donor referral calls. Actually, funeral homes, hospices, or coroner's office could also uh, call us regarding a patient that might be a possible candidate for donation. There's an initial screening done by telephone, and then if suitable, uh, we follow through with the consent process and discuss things with the family. Vision First uh, really essentially recovers corneas, so we do an in-situ corneal excision from the donor just to process the cornea directly into storage media. Once tissue is recovered, it's brought back to the eye bank and we can pre-cut tissue for DSEC and other procedures. Additionally, we'll keep a small supply of sclera available, different sizes to be used for patch procedures. And then where um, transplant is not appropriate for donors um, that want to donate, we can recover whole eyes used for research or training. We partner with other organizations to make this happen as part of the whole transplant process. Indications for transplant. Uh, recently, in the last 15 years, we've seen a shift from penetrating keratoplasty to selective uh, corneal transplant, where just the layer affected is uh, replaced. And so picture here in A, we have a, a DALC procedure. In, in, in A is a DALC, and then um, A is a penetrating keratoplasty. B is a DALC procedure. C is a, uh, a D-SEC procedure. 
you can see the disc of tissue in place, no sutures, and then in D, hard to even tell there's a graft, but that one's had a DMEC. Uh, indications for transplant listed here as of the 2018 statistics. Over the last uh, 15 years, we've seen a tremendous shift in the indications for um, surgery, the types of surgeries performed. The penetrating keratoplasty has decreased concurrently with the use of DSEC or EK uh, tissue. The red line shows the EK procedures, which includes uh, DSEC as well as in 2008, there was a beginning of DMEC. Uh, down near the bottom, that green line and purple line indicates the uh, relatively low numbers for ALK or DALK and keratolimbal allograft uh, stem cell procedures. Much fewer in number. Pre-cutting involves uh, technicians at the eye bank will review the tissue and for specific procedures, matching surgeon request, we're going to process the tissue using a microkeratome. We might have a target thickness of say 40 to 90, which is considered uh, ultra thin. And these graphs are relatively um, uniform in thickness and provide uh, excellent vision for the patient's post transplant. We're using a clean room or um, um, laminar flow hood for processing and OR microscope for doing um, DMAC preparation. We may combine procedures uh, for a DMAC. For a few years, we did a number of these cases, cases which involved a three step process a DSEC cut followed by air injection to create a bubble, and then removing the overlying stroma to generate this graft that was like a DMAC in the middle, really thin, but had a ring of stroma to uh, make the graft a little easier to handle, like the sac. Um, air injection for PDEC is another approach to generate a type 1 bubble. It's approximately 30 microns in thickness. It was a little trickier, of course, to do this, but uh, getting fairly consistent at that, we can boast a 90% success rate with preparation of tissue. Uh, type 2 bubble is a thinner layer consisting of just decimates and endothelium. Some banks actually use air or fluid injection to generate a DMEC graft for the operation. Wait for that slide to change, here we go. So we've got a, an OCT picture showing a, uh, a really wicked thin cornea, 30 microns in the center, uh, prepared for one of these ultra thin requests. After the resection, the cap is put back in position. You see this one is in place. If you notice down on the left, there's a slight thickening of the cap. It's a little bigger than the hole from which it was removed. This is uh, part of the process is there's a generally about a 50 micron thickening of the tissue overall while being processed, which makes getting grafts this thin uh, quite tricky indeed. The uh, picture on the right shows a uh, DMEC graft, we're using the SCUBA technique. SCUBA stands for submerged cornea under backgrounds away. This is uh, a way to enhance the view. Doing the peel in fluid allows a nice visualization of where the membrane is still attached to be able to get a successful uh, graft preparation. Down at the bottom, we have a PDEC showing air injection from the inside of the cornea generating a type 1 bubble in this case. A oh, number of different approaches to generating grafts. In addition to the technical part, uh, part of the iBank activity also recognizes the donor, the donor family, uh, for their precious gift. Uh, in our case, we send a thank you letter fairly soon after the process, advising of the outcome and then a donor medallion and a service that we can hold once a year called our Circle of Life Celebration. And we recognize the donation also with an anniversary card. So donor families are a big part of uh, the process and that helps promote uh, further donations uh, as people see this as a positive program. Donor families uh, come away with a good feeling after the process, which is what we want to help promote the program. Um, this uh, is a video, I'm not going to play it, but um, it really should be your recipient 
a picture of someone that has had a corneal transplant is tremendously powerful for promoting um, eye bank activities. A success, a success story is, uh, can bring tears to people, people's eyes when they realize the benefit of um, donation and the effect it has on someone's uh, vision and, and their family and their, their lives. So this would be your recipient really in the picture. Uh, our eye bank is uh, also doing uh, well enough that we can also support community programs other than um, just main activity. Uh, in 2006, we created a fund to allow the Lions Clubs to provide assistance, financial assistance for ocular surgeries uh, for people in our community that might be um, without the insurance or ability to, to cover the costs. So far, over $330,000 uh, has been awarded to help individuals with eyesight procedures. Um, pictured here, one, one individual beneficiary. Operation Kidsight, another program we have is a screening program for children age 18 months to six years old. Um, we coordinate through schools and reach out to the community to identify eye or vision problems and early identification helps with uh, early and effective treatment. It has uh, been a very successful program over the years. We won't spend a lot of time on this, but um, it does have a, a significant impact in our community. Some of the numbers for our area shown here and other conditions can be identified other than the amblyopia. Here we have a, uh, a short video I want to show um, the second step of the DMIC preparation. We're going to elevate the edges of the graft using a micro finger, so a blunt instrument is gently slid underneath the membrane at the edge just to elevate about a half a millimeter to facilitate the next step, which is the peeling portion. If we identify any tears or rips or tags, these can be removed, uh, tearing toward the outside in order to keep as much graft area available as possible. So this, this facilitates the next step. Last step, um, most difficult step, is peeling the membrane toward the center. We're using a fine uh, tying forceps, to grasp the edge, peripheral edge of the membrane and gently peeling toward the center. We're doing this under fluid. Fluid helps support the graft and it greatly aids uh, visualizing where the graft is still attached. If we see a straight line, this is a good sign. If we see a, a curve or it's smiling at us, that means it's more sticky. Turns out that diabetic donors have been uh, identified as being much more likely to have challenges with the peeling portion. They may be brittle in the periphery or really sticky to the stroma, making this step very difficult. If it does peel easily, it can be done in four sections, peeling towards center, leaving it attached in the middle by one millimeter square. Gradual graft in solution is gonna form a scroll and sorting out which way is up for once the scroll is open is important. So an orientation mark can be accomplished uh, just before punching. Uh, we'll remove the tissue from the fluid shown in the sequence of pictures, uh, allow the graft to fold over. We use a two millimeter biopsy punch to punch a two millimeter hole through the stroma, carefully uh, float the membrane back over that hole. Uh, the plug is still in place. Then we're gonna turn the whole donor rim over and support it on a disc, remove the little plug and keep track of it. We're drying the uh, stroma side of Decimase membrane in this middle picture. And then we're gonna apply some ink, um, tension violet ink on a glove and an S marker to place an ink S on the tissue. Works well if it's dry. And once that's done, we can add fluid and reposition the plug in the hole and this one showing a nice bold uh, letter to ensure which way is up. 
Once it's in the patient, the correct orientation of the S will indicate that the graft is the right way up. Um, so in the changes that we've seen in eye banking, 2003 really saw a, a uh, dramatic shift in the requests from surgeons wanting a larger donor rim. This was to facilitate tissues being cut for with a microkeratome, and in order to do that, you had to have a large rim to have it held firmly on an artificial anterior chamber. Several innovations uh, regarding the uh, development of procedures to process tissue, uh, many really uh, initiated by Garrett Maus in the Netherlands and then adopted in the U.S. As, uh, and then adopted by iBanks as we tried to keep up with what the doctors were asking us to do. And then tissue preparation now has become a very big part of what the iBank activity is. Neck, that thin little layer of tissue, uh, we provide the surgeon different options. Some like to punch their own, so we could provide a graft like this one. It's been peeled, it's got an orientation mark, but not yet cut to size. Uh, some doctors like to have the graft actually punched to their desired size, which is bottom left picture. And punch sizes can vary by quarter millimeters. Uh, the orientation marks can be different, might use a smaller, less amount of ink using a letter F, or for those who can deal with Morse code, uh, dot dash versus dash dot could uh, tell you the orientation. I mentioned that the DMEC graft, once it's in solution, completely separated, forms a scroll. This one is from a little bit younger donor down the bottom center. It shows a nice double scroll that has been formed and it is uh, relatively tight and can be trickier to open. If we do get this double scroll configuration, I think it's an easier uh, step to get it to open rather than a really tight single scroll. And then another option is to uh, preload the tissue into a delivery device. This is showing part of a Jones tube, again with a double scroll inside the Jones tube ready to insert into the patient. There's a small foam plug over the bottom, uh, small tip opening of the Jones tube. This will stay in place until just before insertion. Other alternative for DMEC grafts is to endothelium inwards, and then we would gently pull this little A-shaped graft into the plastic cartridge shown here in the center. This is, uh, has a handle applied to the back of it. We use these small micro forceps to gently pull the graft in. So there's at least one point where the graft has been touched and, and has some damage from the forceps. Correctly positioned here, the graft is right near the opening of the tip of the cartridge. And that bottom right picture shows the uh, handle applied. So it's a closed system. A pull through technique would be used to pull the graft into the recipient eye. An AC maintainer with gentle flow is gonna cause that graft to want to open on its own. So that's the benefit of a trifold. Uh, alternatively, uh, intraocular lens cartridge off-label use could be deployed to um, store the graft. This is a alternative is to use uh, an intraocular lens cartridge off-label use for insertion of the graft. Graft cartridge is filled with fluid, and then the scroll gently placed in the uh, opening. It can be advanced forward, uh, gently nudging from behind. A key with this is to make sure that there is no air in the cartridge. If the graft goes through the fluid easily, but it won't pass through the air, it will just crumple. You can see this again, um, just advancing it forward you see it bump into the end of the end of the fluid, this air that's in the, the tip of the cartridge. Um, some results of some of the things we've been doing. We've got um, technology needs have uh, changed. We need an operating microscope now in the eye bank. We've gone to a clean room setting for our processing. We also research and education. And shown here, Dr. Siska is doing a. Um, EMEC procedure, we've got a donor cornea in an artificial anterior chamber. 
I could tell that the S is the right way up, so we've successfully opened up that graft and just getting ready to put in an air bubble to complete the DMAC procedure. Success of the eye banks in the U.S. has been largely due to uh, tremendous um, uh, changes. Main, main one was the uh, legislation. It's law in the U.S. Uniform Anatomic Gift Act has been uh, modified a few times to greatly facilitate donation. Uh, hospitals must notify us of deaths, donor registries in place through motor vehicle branches, um, greatly facilitates uh, positive feelings about donation with the general public. And the question is not so, so difficult now. Um, donation seems to be a, a, a normal part of uh, what happens after someone dies. The success of uh, eye banking transplants over the years in the USA, uh, in the whole country, we've, saw, we've seen um, uh, tissue that's used in the US is the dark blue, and then total tissue transplant is the lighter green. You can see the difference here is really tissue that's many years, US has been an expert country uh, providing tissue to many places around the world. Um, our eye banks since uh, early years, I mentioned we started in 1960, 61. Uh, not a lot of activity those first 30 years, so it took a while to get things rolling. And 1990s really marked a time when uh, introduction of coil storage media, now short term preservation, allowed for a few days to organize the transplant instead of urgent as was necessary using a fresh whole globe. Uh, numbers dramatically increased that next two decades, and the last uh, years are shown here in graphic form. Uh, we've had a fairly steady increase. We've had uh, lots of effort to keep on top of what are the new procedures and meeting the surgeon's uh, demands or needs. Um, January 1920, uh, things going great. Looking forward to a terrific year for transplantation. We even had to worry about things, such things as competition between eye banks. Marketing became a, an issue. Uh, many new innovations. Some of these are patented and uh, ended some interesting challenges. And then uh, COVID hit. As you all know, um, just dramatically upset everything in the world. Just crazy. Of, um, um, numbers are, are something we've been tracking. This is a snapshot of some of the num COVID numbers. Um, this terrible pandemic situation. We've been following within our state, this upper, uh, upper right here. And as a result of uh, COVID, we've had to do additional screening and this has been revised and, and modified slightly. The iBank Association of America has come up with this flow chart. You have seen it in other places and it's under review constantly. It is the um, approach taken to rule out signs or symptoms related to COVID, whether or not testing has been done and whether our donors can be eligible or not. Medical director review um, is required in many of these cases just to make sure we're, we're screening appropriately and not putting any patients at risk. Um, I'd like to close with uh, just showing a couple of pictures. When Dr. Siska came to Indianapolis, there was snow on the ground. We had a couple of months of, uh, of effective uh, uh, practice and uh, weather did improve, but when COVID hit, things had to shut down. We're now back at work somewhat. We're about half speed in terms of numbers, just showing our QA staff and distribution uh, uh, person packing up tissue for um, sending somewhere. Vision Share is a group that we work with to coordinate our efforts with other eye banks to provide tissue around the world. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to present today and uh, appreciate your kind attention. Thank you.